Okay, guys, welcome to Chasing the Murder, and this is a talking news episode. Before we get started, will you help me out by hitting that subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the notification bell, and also please comment. And so, I'm doing an update on the Gabby Petito story. This is a very popular story. People know about the story from all over. It's captured the young people, so that's one of the reasons... Um, this is so popular. So Brian um, Laundry is still on the run. Found this article by Matt Leach and Sarah Blue. So we're finding out that the police and every, well, several of the investigators have a few other people out there that they believe could contribute to finding Brian Laundry who is missing. And one of those people is a cattle rancher by the name of Alan McEwen. Y'all know I can butcher some names. Anyways, he has spent nearly every day of the last 30 years navigating the woods where Brian Laundry suspected of hiding. And he says it's not conductive or habitation. There's no surviving out here. I don't know how to say it. End quote. And I'm going to show you a clip in just a second. But he says the fact that there's no buzzards, no body. It's just, so this cowboy is a, a experienced outdoorsman. He lives outside around this alligator infested nature preserve. And he says he's very familiar with this habitat. He has an opinion and he really doesn't think that Brian is there either dead or alive. He says his experiences of finding lost, well, things in this area comes from him losing a few cattle. He said he successfully located those cows by searching for dry land where you expect something to be in a swamp like this. So after Laundry's parents pointed authorities toward the Carton Reserve or the Nature Reserve, supposedly, guys, the parents say that Brian drove his Mustang to this area. He had a backpack with him. And he never come home. Now, the Mustang got tickets saying you need to remove this car. The parents say, no, we're not going to move this car because he might need it. And they end up picking the car up. And shortly after that, report Brian Laundry missing. So that's key. They have a missing child now. But many people don't believe that he was ever taken to this reserve at all. So, though he is one that has camped in the bare necessities off the grid, would he be able to survive this 25,000 acres that is 90% swamp? You know what I have to say about it. If you suspect that Brian is lying about, or sorry, Brian's parents are lying about dropping him off because we know they went camping before this we know they were hanging out and talking a lot if you don't believe that then brian isn't going to be where you think he should be and we should know this by now so here's an issue i have the fact that the parents seem to be very calm and collected and living their life mowing the grass you know going places and return it back home just living this normal lifestyle it says to me that most likely there's nothing worrying them so therefore probably their son is fine that's what they know and so you know that explains the odd behavior that's me speculating because we don't know what the parents know maybe they don't know where brian is and they're just able to handle it well i have to agree that the swamp would be difficult to be there for a long period of time if you've ever watched naked and afraid people that had to live in a swamp you know how difficult it can be between the bugs and the fact that you can't start fires. That's the most important thing. There's tons of things to eat there. You have frogs, you have gators, you have fish. There's tons of creatures in the surroundings. But you cannot eat them if you cannot cook them. So you risk getting sick if you do. So at this point where he's been gone this long he has to have eat he has to drink water i believe he has a phone to charge 
So what are the water sources? What are the food sources that would be around in the background from his house moving north or south, or at least more importantly, where was the place that they camped last? So we know right now, Brian Laundry, he has a warrant for his arrest for credit fraud, which means he can get around 15 years in jail and a $25,000 fine. That isn't a tap on a hand. So I got that information from a few people who understand the laws in that area. So what's the big deal with the warrant and how did it come to be? So the fact is more likely than not that they're able to determine the time of death of Gabby since they were able to determine that it was caused by homicide. Then match those dates to the days that he used her credit cards based off the receipts or wherever they get their information, bank statements, let's say, which will say more than likely um, he was using those credit cards, her money without her and, or her permission because she wasn't here. So it's been nearly, well, just about over a week of searching for Brian in his reserve with no luck. What did this entail? Well, it meant zoning. Um, many of these areas where laundry was likely to enter. It was a small search, but in this case, it could mean more clues. So this search was conducted over eight days by air, waterway, and on foot. They also used cadaver dogs. They even had divers come in. North Port, I'm so, sometimes I'll call that North Point. I don't want know why, guys, so excuse that. It's North Port Police. They have been working hard with other law enforcement agencies to find clues about the disappearance of Brian Laundrie. In this Carmilla Hawking article, it says that there just were not any new developments this weekend. According to Rich Coco, uh, a safety and security specialist at Wink News, states that the lack of activity can be a good sign. He says, quote, a lot of physical activity can decrease over time, but there's a lot of work going on behind the scenes. There are agents who write subpoenas and monitor, build that timeline, everything to do, in quotes. So it's to be expected that the FBI says there are no comments on whether there are any new developments. The FBI returns to the laundry house actually just yesterday collecting DNA from Brian's parents, which I did a video on yesterday. And what could this mean? Well, most likely they're wanting to attach some evidence that they have already to someone or suspect or person of interest. DNA is also used to identify um, a lot of cold cases, uh, deceased persons, but we know that Gabby's already been identified. Could it be identification for Brian? Possibility, but most likely not, not certain. So the last thing police investigators are gonna do is give us updates of where they think Brian is or where he's going or if they even found clues as to where he is. So right now we have a lot of money going in for a reward for anyone that's able to tell them where Brian's at law firms are throwing in like twenty thousand dollars other people just throwing money in here and there remember the bounty hunter well dog the bounty hunter showed up at laundry's parents house a lot of people are thinking that he did this just to put his face in the spotlight he really hasn't shown where he's been looking for brian so who knows what's really going on with that but that's been in the news quite a lot lately. Hopefully he does, he's able to help bring positive in this, not just uh, a way to lure in views. 
To make things even worse, they hope that tips usually help in a case, but they're getting so many tips of men walking that resemble Brian. So you have some coming out of Canada, some in North Florida. I mean, they're coming from all over the place. And so this is really kind of causing issues. So the interesting things that happened in this case to me are when a federal grand jury indicted Brian Laundry for unauthorized use of debit card and the mention of there is no parental child privilege. Some experts expect to see the parents actually summon to a grand jury. So you know that most like husbands and wives, they don't have to testify against each other in court. There's laws against that. But in this case, there's no laws saying that a parent cannot testify against their child. While sadly, and I think this is horrible, we need to stop this. Places like Massachusetts are pushing for parental privilege. But we don't have to worry about that with this case. So a lot of people do want to know, what do the parents know? But watching investigators, it doesn't look like much. Or the parents are not in any way cooperating to help find him. We know they didn't help find Gabby. And so this put a lot of dislike on the parents of Brian. I think, you know, a lot of people are like, well, we don't know what they know. No, we don't. But when somebody's missing and you suspect, suspect danger, you talk no matter what. And these guys didn't do that. They didn't care about Gabby. They just cared about their son and the consequences for their son. And I have speculated when I hear the neighbors say that these have these people have gone on long walks, it's evident that Brian is very close to his parents. Um, the parents seem to baby him. He doesn't seem to have anything successful going on in his life at age 23. You know, did he even have a bank account? I doubt it. It seemed that he was mooching off his girlfriend for money. And I'm waiting to see if he also mooched off his parents. We know that the two lived with Brian's parents for a period of time. So really, Brian doesn't have anything really shining a positive spotlight on him. He just seems, at this point, with the information that we have right now, he was a tag along. He was the one taken care of. And you can see that. You can see where Gabby kind of babied him. She would feed him everything and in one of the videos where she's feeding him you can see where he kind of he even acts like a almost like an infant's child we know that gabby also um had a lot of complaints about his ability to organize and to keep things clean this is actually something that pushed for one of the arguments on august 12th where they would pulled over and police talked with the couple discovering that they had gotten a little bit um, physical in that altercation and I'll never forget it she said he stresses me out and you could tell she was incredibly stressed out and when police talked with Brian on the side it just seemed like he didn't get it he didn't care all he cared about is the way that he looked he didn't care if she was going to go to jail and to be accused as the aggressor which we know now most likely was more defense marks on his head the scratch marks that are on his face are defense marks speculative okay as i promised guys let me play this clip for you of what this cowboy has to say there's no place habitable i mean you know if he packed a backpack for a couple days yeah but you know unless he's got hide like a gator there's no, and nobody's going to survive with the mosquitoes and the bugs and this and that. And then we have the theory of people saying, oh, the gators have eaten him or something like that. You know, again, gators out here when, are more afraid of you than you are of them. You walk up on a gator 90% of the time, boom, they talk, tell it and go the other way. Anything dead you find in the woods, you're going to look up, you're going to see buzzards flying like crazy. Dead body out here, yeah that is decomposing everything and rigor mortis set in, you are going to see buzzards on it. You are going to see buzzards on it. There's plenty of people that know a lot more than I do 
but I have learned a lot in my life. And one thing I know is nobody's going to fly a pipe over there for two weeks on foot. Losing a child, I couldn't imagine having a child missing like this. I would go nuts. I wouldn't be out mowing my yard, I can promise you that. So what he's referring to is the fact that if Brian was missing and they had concerns about him missing, then why are their actions not emulating that, you know? So what do you guys feel? What do you think? Do you think the parents know something? Do you believe that they are perpetrators? Do you think there was, I guess, co-conspirators in a plan to hatch or help Brian get away? Or do you truly feel they don't know anything about where their son is located, where he went, or his plans? So an update on this bounty hunter, which I don't know much about. He says the reason that he went to Brian's parents' home was because the police said we were welcome knocking on the door. So we did. We wanted to tell Laundry that our goal was to find and revive Brian, end quote. We seen him standing at the door and standing at the side of their house, but it turns out that uh, the Laundries ended up calling 911 and having them come out and investigate this bounty hunter and josh taylor said that he treated the 911 calls from mr laundry's parents the same as calls from others in fact josh taylor says that they've had a lot of 911 calls attached to this home quote we've been called to that home many times for all sorts of problems media protesters celebrity searchers end quote so their son, who has been um, marked as missing by them, and possibly even investigators, has been charged with bank fraud and among other things, as I mentioned before. So, And while he was on his honeymoon, remarried after his wife passed away, uh, this bounty hunter, Chapman, said fans asked him to join the, this search. Now, isn't that nice of him? So, he says he has a thousand tips. So, we'll see what he does, huh? We'll see what he made up. I'm not big on these people that try to get publicity. So, anyways, uh, guys, remember we have people still missing. Check out these faces. These are stories that aren't seen by the nation. Don't forget, guys, subscribe and like. That helps this channel out. If you like these stories and you like helping um, get these missing cases out there, especially the smaller cases, please do that. Also, if you would like to help me be able to keep doing this, you can donate to my Patreon. All right, guys, I love you, and I'll see you guys soon.